Hey guys. All right. This is my favorite. Um, this week we are talking about brand and our, um, our format's going to be a little bit different this week. I'm going to do one big presentation on brand and I'm going to talk about each of the modules and then I'm going to cut the video up. So um, in each module, you'll, you'll have a refresh, but the video will, will be the same. So you can either watch it all the way through um, and then never return to it, or you can watch the pieces if you have specific questions. Okay, so let's hop right in. Let's do this. So I want to talk a little bit about what is brand. It's a, it's a really vague word. It's used in a lot of different ways. Actually, can I bring my face forward? No, I can't. Okay, never mind. Um, it's used in a lot of different ways and a lot of different people. And you know, you hear about branding, and you kind of assume that that's all about a logo and all of that. But um, brand is a lot of different things. So we're going to do a quick little exercise. This is going to be a little strange since you all are not actually here with me, um, and I can't get your feedback, but I just want you to look at these images that I'm going to put up on the screen. We're going to go through four or five of these and think about the adjectives you would use um, when you look at these. Like, so this is uh, the Museum of Happiness, and I think happy, I think bright and colorful, I think um, vibrant. There's some organic here, friendly, approachable, right? Um, and then we go to this one, and it's it's a bit more industrial, masculine, eclectic, um, textured. All right, think about these these kind of these adjectives that you think about that. And and this one, it's kind of there's part of it that's unfriendly, and part of that it's friendly. So there's a contrast there. It's unique. Um, this one also has a lot of contrast. We've got kind of this organic, sketchy rebel book club and then we've got this background that's more traditional and refined and and maybe intellectual comes to mind or classy um i don't know what adjectives come to mind for you you know how does it feel what do these images make you feel how about marie forleo she's she's a, a high-end business coach she, you know the world needs that special gift that only you have right and i see this and i see clean and modern and um, bright and somewhat friendly. Um, other people, it's interesting, I've, I've given this presentation before, we did a workshop in London and people thought that this was dated and um, 1980s and tacky <laughs> and boring. So it's all about perception. Um, one thing that you wanna think about with brand in particular is that your the perception the only people you care about how they perceive your brand is the people that you want to serve in your business. And in fact, you can strategically repel people from your brand by using things that those people wouldn't bother. So looking at Monzo, for example, to me, I see kind of lightweight, a little modern, it's got some rounded edges, um, it's clean, it's simple, it's kind of elegant, but kind of newish. Um, you know, got these kind of bright colors. Well, for those of you that don't know, Monzo is a bank. And, you know, in comparison to traditional banks, this is um, pretty fresh, right? And so there might be companies um, or people that would walk away from this bank um, because they're, they're used to like the traditional, you know, capital one B of a type banks, and this would not feel good to them. It wouldn't feel safe and secure, but younger folks that want to be able to walk in the bank and like know the teller, that's who they're trying to appeal to with the grain grocer. I see organic. I think natural, I think hippie, I think, um, you know, na natural foods are, you know, Kara beans instead of cocoa and gluten free is like the sort of stuff that comes to mind. It's, it's organic and loose and kind of sketchy and creative and wild. Um, so everything a brand does is advertising though. So it's not just about the brand style. Really at the end of the day, what brand is, is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So whether that's how you 
dress, what your logo looks like, what you talk about, what your tagline is, all of that stuff is part of your brand. Brand is really everything you do. And this course is specifically around creating an online brand so that you're able to work anywhere. And so you want to think about everything you do online and how that relates to you as a business. You are your brand. If you're a freelancer, if you're a consultant, if you're a coach, you are your brand right now, how you represent your brand. Now you can have a brand that has a name, you know, you can create an agency, the X agency. Um, but in the meantime, if you're the only employee, how you interact with clients, how you respond to emails, how you sign off of your emails, it's all part of your brand. So what are the essentials for a good brand? This is what we're, you know, remember, we're, I'm all about simplicity, right? I don't want you to become a branding expert if that's not your area of expertise. What I want you to focus on are three things when you're creating materials for your brand, whether that's a website or um, a logo or an email that you're crafting to send out. I want you to be clear. Tell your story. Make sure it's easy to understand. Don't use jargon. Don't use vague um, statements and focus on your expertise and what you're really offering. Be clear. Number two, you want to be compelling. Oh my God, nobody wants a boring brand. Nobody wants to do business with somebody that um, is a snooze fest, right? So use your uniqueness, your creativity, use your why, the story. One of the things that um, I was slightly surprised by um, with this particular course, the people that signed up for this course in our initial feedback section, almost all of you said something about the reason that you signed up is because of my energy. Um, something of that nature that you, you, that I was the real deal, right? And that's about trust. It's about credibility. It's about honesty. And that's all just by being you, you can bring that to the table. Right, but you want to be compelling. Don't hide. Don't be boring. Um, don't try and be like everybody else. You are unique. And as Marie says, the world needs that special gift that you have. So embrace it. Be compelling. Tell your story. Tell your why. Tell why you're in business and, and you know what your mission is. I talk about that a lot. Um, and then lastly, particularly when it comes to the online stuff, the copy, the visuals, or your tagline, is be consistent. Make sure that you're telling the same story everywhere. Now you can use different words to tell the same story. You can use, you know, a paragraph and you can have a sentence and you can um, say, say it in different ways, but you wanna be talking about yourself in a consistent manner. So if you are a designer, be a designer. Don't be a, a graphic uh, artist over on one platform and a visual storyteller over on another and a communicator on another. Tell the same story everywhere, as clear, compelling, and consistently as possible. Make sense? So, that's the lesson. <laughs> that's branding in a nutshell. Everything you do is brand, whether it's how you walk into a room and how you dress it to a networking event, that's part of your brand. It's part of the perception. Your first impression on your ideal client, what are they gonna see, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. What is your brand personality? This is your exercise one. Um, you know, as I said earlier, brand is really what people are saying about you in, when you're not in the room, right? And while of course you can't manufacture that and you can't control it entirely, you can start to do things in a manner that is in alignment of what you want people to say about you when you're not in the room, right? So think about how you'd like to perceive in this exercise. I want you to think about how do you walk into a room if you want to be perceived as a trustworthy expert? Do you walk in with your shoulders high and up or do you walk in with your shoulders down and hide in a corner? Is that somebody that you would think that's a trusted expert? Maybe not. 
how much personal information do you share, either online or offline? Um, this is one that if you came in on the webinar, you've, you've heard me talk about the overshares, right? I've had people contact me on Instagram about doing business, and then I go to their page, and it's just like babies and diapers and, and things from their life that are overwhelmingly not professional to have on your social media. If you're sharing that sort of stuff on your social media right now, knock that crap off, part of my French, um, and start thinking about that. Either lock down your account if, if you know, what you're doing on Facebook is, is just sharing your baby's um, diapers issues all over the place, then lock that stuff down and put it on private, right? Because everything you do online is public now, and it is part of your brand. Um, you can Google search yourself. Here's a, a fun little exercise. Google search yourself and see what sort of things show up. Make sure to check those image tabs on Google too. Um, that's all part of your brand. And if there's something on there that you think, well, that's probably not going to elevate my credibility in my business, do your best to get rid of it, right? And again, so just think about how you'd like to be perceived in the long run. You know, do you come off as warm and friendly um, or are you more concise and trustworthy? And a lot of this stuff, you want to think about it in terms of what your client wants, right? So for me, when I first switched into coaching, um, what could have made sense and what multiple people have told me, you know, you should do this is like become, you know, a high end kind of executive coach, right? That's where the money is. You want to be really professional and buttoned up and, and talk to people in corporate business. It's where the, the money is in corporate, right? I had somebody be like, well, if you just, um, you know, up to your, um, your style elements, I, I can't remember the term that he used, but he's like, you know, you, you want to elevate your brand so that you can go into corporations and give speeches and then you'll be a paid speaker. And I'm like, well, I, I'm sure I will be a paid speaker at some point, but my whole thing is about leaving corporate jobs. So I don't, I don't see that as an alignment. So think about who your ideal client is or what your personal mission is, what your business mission is, and then think about who you need to be and who your brand needs to be um, in order to be attractive to the people that you want. And at the same time, be repelling the people that you don't want, right? So I am super open. I'm about vulnerability and talking through stuff and being real. I refuse to do, you know, shady marketing tactics. It, that stuff just drives me insane. And I don't, I, I believe that it's, it takes longer sometimes to build a business through authenticity versus um, tactics because there's psychology in those tactics, but I find them repulsive. And so I refuse to do them, right? Which is why um, all of you said, I'm a real deal. Um, I trusted you, right? Because I'm completely transparent in most things, you know, and then think again about where your clients are and you know what their interaction is going to be. So if your ideal client like mine spends a lot of time on Instagram, what does she need she or he need to see on your profile to do business with you? If your ideal client is Google searching, and uh, what are they searching for? These are all parts of your brand, right? What are you known for? So in this exercise, the first exercise, it's super duper simple. <clears throat> Just open up the brand personality worksheet. I've got a bunch of adjectives in here. You are free to pick your own as well. But basically, I just want you to pick your top five adjectives for how you want to be described, right? What words would people use to describe you when you are not in the room or your business? So for me, trustworthy is definitely um, one of them, right? Um, knowledgeable or intelligent would be another one, you know, um, inspiring is one, you know, so pick those that kind of work for your brand. Don't overthink it. You can change it. Um, but this all kind of goes through, um, into your other exercises. So exercise two, as I said in the intro video is, um, you've, you've done about 80% of the work for this. This is um, an avatar is not just a movie. Um, what we're going to do is create 
a persona or an avatar for your ideal client. And that's going to take all that work that you did in the last module where you defined out your ideal client, whether that's someone you work with directly or somebody that hires you. So if it's the hiring manager at an agency, you're going to actually create this person. You're going to create a character or an avatar. Um, and you're going to think about what needs and desires you're solving for him or her in the financial, emotional, and personal areas, right? So you've done a lot of this stuff. This should be mostly review unless you got a little tangled up in the last one and some of this might be moot. But, you know, financial benefits, anything related to money. Emotional is relating to well-being, spiritual, or mental health personal, anything related to physical space, food, body, and perception. So as more examples here, financial needs of say a mid-level manager that might be hiring a copywriter, um, they have a financial need for regular income from their job, um, which is means that they need to keep their job and make their boss happy. So by hiring you, you need to make them look good, right? So they can keep their job. Um, and which provides them with stability and freedom um, in their regular life and, you know, be able to take a vacation because they have this copywriter that they don't have to worry about what you're doing. They trust them. So just little things like that. It's kind of a weird example. But the idea is you just want to think about what's really driving the person that is hiring you, whether um, you're working direct with a customer, if you're um, a coach, we have a few coaches in the program. Um, you're going to be thinking about the problem, the emotional, personal, and financial needs of the client that you work with directly. And if you are a traditional creative freelancer, a designer, a copywriter, et cetera, you're going to think about the hiring manager. It may or may not be a single person. You might be working with large companies. So it's whoever you're actually working with. And you can do with this multiple clients if you have multiple stakeholders. So if your ideal client, for example, is a large nonprofit agency. There's going to be multiple stakeholders who have to have buy-in on whether or not you get the bid, right? So you might want to do a couple of these and, and just think about it. Um, I've gotten a sample. There's a, a sample exercise in there, and this is really pretty close to my actual ideal client for a reference. And it the, the reason to do this whole exercise, the reason why you're doing this, even though you've done all of this client work, I know it's like, why do we keep doing this? Um, the reason is manifold. For one thing, by doing this, you're going to put a name to your ideal client and think about this person when you're creating for your brand. So what I do with Christina here is every time I write an email to my email list, um, and we'll get into email marketing later in the course, I think about Christina as if I'm writing her a letter, right? That's how I write my emails. If that, and that's how I often write blog posts. Um, I'll think about what, what would Christina need to hear, right? That sort of stuff. So that's the value of this. You can do your own template, um, but generally the idea is, you know, just talk a little bit about some of their key personality traits, the problems that you're solving, um, the emotional and financial benefits, um, are what you want to keep in mind when you're answering these questions. Um, and you're going to kind of refine again, your unique value proposition at the very end in the, why will he, she, um, come to you instead of your competitors. Makes sense. And if you get really stuck on this, if you're still really having a hard time narrowing down your ideal client, I have a bonus exercise in, um, in the resources tab um, called the personal inventory worksheet. And really that's, it's for you to answer about your own stuff, um, but with the intention of sparking ideas for who that client might be. Because oftentimes our ideal client is some version of ourselves um, or something reflected back at ourself. So think about it that way. Um, your, ex your third exercise this week is going to be a brand messaging Mad Libs, and this should be a pretty fun little exercise as well. Um, as I said earlier, consistency is really, really key in everything that you do from a branding standpoint. So you just want to start getting in the habit of using consistent messaging. 
Um, it's, it, you never have to do all of this perfect and everything's changeable, but start by like using the same tagline on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook or whatever, instead of calling yourself something different on every platform, right? Oops. So, um, oh, yeah, as I said, consistency is key to brand and a good tagline or introduction for your website or your social media is going to include is really your key value proposition or your special sauce. Um, in conversational or layman's terms. Your tagline should generally kind of answer what you do, who you do it for, and why you do it, um, or what benefits you provide. So this is a, a really simple statement is, I help X do X so they can X. I help entrepreneurs build online businesses so they can work anywhere. Makes sense, like super simple stuff. Um, so you've got a template again, you can create your own if you'd like. Um, but just start by writing out that Mad Libs type statement. I help blank do blank so they can blank. You've done versions of this before in the last, I think two different modules, um, multiple experiences. And in part two, uh, which I noticed there's two ones on here right now. Um, I want you to just experiment with some different formats below. You don't have to do all of these. And if you just hit nail it right off the bat and you feel good, keep moving. If you don't just play around with it and like, just find something that feels good to you. And your, your assignment is to just start updating your social profiles and your taglines into what you do. And so some of the examples are just, you know, start framing it as do this thing. I do this thing. Um, for this type of person, right, um, who doesn't want to do this, right? You can just kind of play with how you phrase it, but they're all just variations on that first theme. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, your third exercise is what's your brand style? Um, part one is very similar to what you just did with your five adjectives for what people say about you. That was kind of your personality words. In this one, you're gonna pick your aesthetic words. So five visual adjectives. Again, you have a handout. You can also pick your own. Um, what you wanna keep in mind here is one, things that you like and things that your ideal client is gonna like and things that might repel the wrong client. So thinking back to that, um, was it Mondo Bank? You know, if you want young, um, youthful clients, you want to use stuff that's going to resonate with useful, you know, old fashioned is not going to be one of your brand aesthetics, uh, words, right? But if you're doing high level bank encryption security work, it might be old fashioned. Like that might need to be one of your aesthetics because that's who is your ideal client and what they need. Makes sense. And then the last piece, this is the fun one. Now, I know some of you are gonna get a little perfectionistic and be like, I can't do that, you're a designer. It doesn't need to look like this. You can do this in any format, you can make your own. What, what I want you to do is start looking at websites or color palettes and just put some stuff together based on your adjectives and, um, and just put some things together until you feel like you've got something that looks good. You can use, if you're not a designer, if you don't have Illustrator, you can do a number of things. You can create a Pinterest board and just pick some things that um, makes for you and pin them in a private board. You can use Canva, canva.com, um, and put together some colors and some fonts and you know a sample logo or whatever. Pick a few pictures or textures that go together. Um, you can do it old fashioned. You can get magazines, go buy a bunch of magazines at the local Goodwill and cut them apart. Find some colors that you like to put together that you think would resonate with your client and that you like, and just put together a few things. And you, you're never actually tied to this a hundred percent, but the idea behind this, behind a style guide is that when you start creating your website and you start creating brand materials, you get your business cards, whatever it is that you're gonna create for your business, you wanna keep it simple in terms of with fonts, try to stick to three fonts maximum whenever possible within any given document and preferably across your brand. There are times that this doesn't work. Like, you know, you don't have any control over the font on certain websites. You might have a challenge with certain fonts. 
doing certain things. But in general, anything that you see that comes from me is going to use Leto, Source, or Northwell. Um, and then you want to pick a number of colors. Three colors is a really good for your primary colors, and then you'd have two or three, and then you have some accent colors, right? So if you went to katebegoy.com, you'd see that black, gold, and white are really what I use about 80% of the time for the elements. I use that kind of off-white um, as a way to distinguish things, and then very occasionally I'll use green or pink when I need to pop something and make it really stand out from the rest. Like if, if you have what's called a call to action button on your website and you want to make it really stand out, use a color that you don't use anywhere else because the eye goes immediately to it, right? And then I just have, you know, grab a few pat, um, patterns, textures, um, or some other illustration or image that you think kind of defines your brand, like, um, like these, I, like I use my face most of the time. It's actually borderline narcissistic and I don't do it because um, I want to look at my face all the time, but because I'm an introvert and I don't do a lot of in-person marketing, I try to put my face forward on the web as much as possible so people start to interact and get a feel for my personality and my kind of overly expressive face um, comes up in a lot of my images, right? So that's something that I use a lot. I like the gold patterns and texture to, as you see here and I use different ones sometimes, depends on what I'm doing. Um, and then I try when possible to use kind of cleaner, modern images with white which is not actually what you see on my Instagram because my Instagram, I just take photos of, you know, what I love and, and usually nature. And so there's a lot of different colors, but from a brand perspective, if I'm going to pick out, um, stock photos, I'm going to try and pick out a photo like this that has more white. And that is it. That's your brand workshop. I'm going to tell you that this workshop, the last time I taught it, we went over this, all of this in an hour. And then um, the students got to do all of the exercises in an hour. So keep it simple is basically what I'm saying. Um, that said, have fun with it. Be as creative as you want. I'll give you some specific um, written instructions in the next, um, in your actual lesson plan. Um, but I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. Talk to you soon.